Hello everyone, welcome. Today, we bring you an exciting update about Yuzu. While we've seen some changes in the interface and a few in performance, there's one highlight that stands out, an incredible up to 400% improvement in CPU speed when decoding ASDC textures. The big question is, how will this impact your gameplay? We'll explore this question and also identify which games will benefit the most from this update. If you're interested in having an enhanced gaming experience, stick with us. And if you're an emulation enthusiast looking for the latest news, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We're dedicated to keeping you informed with the most important information. This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. Before we start the video, I'd like to express our special thanks to our community member on Discord, Well, for suggesting the creation of this content. If you, like Well, want to contribute ideas or communicate directly with the community, be sure to join our Discord. The link is available in the video description. Before we delve into the details of the recent gains, it's crucial that all of you understand the concept of ASDC textures, or Adaptive Scalable Texture Compression. This texture compression method is widely used in ARM devices, particularly advantageous in mobile environments where both storage and graphic performance are critical factors. ASDC textures play an essential role in reducing the space occupied by textures, contributing to more efficient performance. The ability to load smaller textures faster by the GPU is a significant advantage. It's important to emphasize that GPUs and current PCs are not natively compatible with ASDC textures, which leads to the need for software-based decompression. Depending on the used configuration, this load is distributed between the CPU and GPU. Consequently, it was common to observe textures that appeared incorrectly, causing stutters and visual issues. In the example displayed in the background, you can see the stuttering and texture distortion problems that used to occur in the game Bayonetta 3. There are several games that significantly utilize ASDC textures. Among them, I tested titles like Astral Chain, Bayonetta 3, Luigi's Mansion 3, and Metroid Prime Remastered. The development team reported performance increases of up to 400% for OpenGL and up to 66% for Vulkan, which prompted me to test both sets of APIs. Now, let's see if these performance gains when using ASDC textures are genuinely noticeable. It's important to remember that I'm using a GPU with GDDR6X memory, the fastest currently available. If you're using slower memory standards, your results may vary. The goal of these tests is to identify if there are any stuttering or abnormal texture display issues. Therefore, FPS won't be unlocked during the tests to provide a fair side-by-side -side comparison. Let's start with Astral Chain, a game that, in my opinion, maximizes this feature along with Bayonetta 3. I'll focus on real-time cutscenes, an area of the game that extensively utilizes ASDC textures. As you can observe from previous versions, many of the problems had already been resolved. However, when analyzing the low 1% averages, it's noticeable that the more recent versions, at least in OpenGL, had fewer instances of stuttering or, when they did occur, the recovery time to normal gameplay was considerably reduced. Our second test was with Liji's Mansion 3. Fortunately, I didn't have issues with this game previously. Again, I didn't face significant problems, only audio desync, but this issue arises due to the 60 FPS mod I was using to capture this gameplay. In this case, we had opposite results compared to the previous test, as the low 1% value was worse in the newer emulator versions, both in the OpenGL and Vulkan APIs. The next game we're going to test is Metroid Prime Remastered. In the past, we had issues with textures not forming correctly in front of us. Additionally, when opening doors to other rooms or when the camera changed angles, there were many stutters, making the game practically unplayable in the emulator's early versions, shortly after the game's release. However, these problems seem to have been addressed, although there are still further improvements to be made. It's worth noting that if you choose to use the OpenGL API, several effects might not be rendered correctly, which can affect progress in the game. As for performance, in a roughly 5-minute course I ran for testing, I once again couldn't notice a significant gain in version 3810. Version 3790 still showed a better, low 1% result, with a minimum of 45 FPS, while version 3810 reached 43 FPS. And finally, in the last test, we tackled the most problematic game on this list, Bayonetta 3. Currently, Bayonetta 3 is still not entirely playable on either emulator, causing many issues such as stutters, audio-video desync, and even random crashes. I couldn't start the game with the OpenGL API, so all tests were conducted using Vulkan only. In this case, we were able to notice significant gains with the new emulator version. During about 5 minutes of gameplay, I observed that the maximum speed is much higher, 
and although the game is still unplayable, the stutters have considerably decreased, and the overall visual quality has improved. I'll leave the statistics I obtained from this test for you to compare. Thus, we conclude the video. I must confess that at one point, I thought there would be no change in relation to my system, but when testing Bayonetta 3, I noticed an incredible difference in performance. Have you tested versions later than 3805? Did you manage to achieve significant gains? Share your experiences in the comments, and until the next video.